much for your uh, invitation. Uh, I was very um, uh, humbled uh, when I received the invitation to speak in front of uh, such a distinguished card, uh, crowd in an institute which has already established itself as one, as one of the primary uh, platforms of foreign policy in all of uh, European Union. Uh, we've had a very good visit yesterday and today in Ireland. We met uh, Minister Quinn of Education and uh, Minister Creighton of uh, Europe Affairs and spoke uh, at length with a lot of Q&A uh, at the committee, Foreign Affairs Committee of the Parliament here. Um, and these are all good contacts, first ones officially between Kosovo and Ireland, which we hope will uh, bring uh, fruitful, concrete, touchable cooperation. Ireland for Kosovars and Albanians uh, holds a very special place. Uh, there are so many parallels in our history, uh, from the way uh, of obtaining the independence to post-independence conflict between the political parties, uh, uh, to the very spirit, I guess, of the people. Uh, we've had a very good uh, contact with the Irish army throughout the last decades since the war ended in 99, and Irish soldiers have given a fundamental contribution uh, to peace in Kosovo. Uh, they were a type of soldiers that didn't just stay at the barracks and played Sony PlayStation uh, for the six months, but actually um, stayed with the community, talked to the community, and participated actively in rebuilding efforts and uh, making sure that the links between Ireland and Kosovo uh, will be long-term, permanent, and based on friendship. Um, that being said, um, I will switch to the present moment where we are. Uh, just yesterday, actually, Robert Cooper, uh, and we were, uh, uh, Baroness Ashton's envoy for a dialogue, was supposed to be in Pristina uh, due to the snowy, hof, uh, heavy snowfall, and we had one meter of snow record in the last 60 years, uh, last 24 hours. Even our prime minister could not go back from Vienna uh, to Kosovo. He also didn't make the trip, uh, Mr. Cooper, but I think there was a video link uh, talk uh, last night uh, with our deputy prime minister and the envoy in a dialogue. We are now following, and I'll take the cue from the visit of deputy prime minister Dinkic of Serbia here, uh, and what have happened last six months. Um, in December, uh, EU has uh, told uh, Serbia that in order for the Serbia to get candidate status, candidate status, it has to comply with three conditions. Uh, these, in our view, are the bare-bone conditions, really the minimum of the minimum one can do to uh, show uh, friendship and uh, dedication to European values and uh, values of uh, uh, proper uh, regional uh, cooperation and uh, good neighborly policies, which are, I guess, uh, sine qua non for any kind of country trying to approach EU. Uh, one was that the Serbia should allow, should stop the barricades uh, which have been erected in north um, uh, during the summer by the what we call extremist uh, parallel structures. We call extremist parallel structures not because uh, we evaluate them so, but uh, you know people wearing Ratko Mladic shirts, uh, who is responsible for genocide in Srebrenica, uh, and who are blocking the roads, uh, claiming that they want they don't want any dialogue at all with Albanians and Albanian authorities, we don't look at them as a human rights uh, activists, really. On the other hand, uh, parallel structures are there, par called, called parallel, because uh, according to 1244 resolution adopted in 1999, um, which basically is, uh, settled the war in Kosovo, uh, all Serbian presence, military, intelligence, police, had to depart Kosovo in 99. Uh, these forces uh, were not uh, friendly, they were not benign, uh, they were there um, remaining from the years of Milosevic uh, and we don't look at them as uh, friendly contributors to peace but rather hindrance to peace. And I think Angela, uh, Chancellor, Merk uh, Chancellor Merkel's uh, request to, for Serbia to dismantle these parallel structures uh, was a focused request to basically slowly withdraw from possibility of influencing negatively uh, the political landscape in Kosovo. Also, these structures are mostly supported by uh, marginal political parties in Serbia, which are hardline radical and uh, nationalist parties. Uh, they don't have any support in liberal uh, landscape in Serbia. Uh, so this was one of the requests of, um, of, of EU. Second request was uh, for Serbia to allow for all of EULEX to operate in Kosovo uh, without any hindrance. Uh, EULEX is, as you know, justice and... Uh, uh, cr cr crime mission in Kosovo. It is set up there to help us uh, slowly build up a system of and justice sector which will deal with uh, organized crime and corruption, and we'll also deal with the more difficult cases of of, 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 of criminal activities in Kosovo. Uh, they cannot currently operate in North. Uh, we don't have any court there. Court has been uh, burned and taken over in '99 by nationalists in North, and since then is not really operating. 
so second request of EU was to enable uh, EU legs to operate in the north of Kosovo as well. Third request was to allow for Kosovo to participate in regional fora, uh, to find a formula uh, uh, in a dialogue with us to see how we can participate in various regional initiatives. There are about 36 various organizations from free trade agreements like SEFTA to um, Black Sea Organization to um, RCC, Regional Cooperation Council. In all of these organizations, we don't have a say. We don't have a cooperation or we don't, we're not members of. On a few of them earlier, we have been members through UNMIC, uh, them uh, signing a status neutral uh, application, and we already took um, in some meetings um, uh, where we had a UN flag and it said UNMIC and not Kosovo, formulas which uh, really reflected past and not present situation. Uh, so now we are basically stuck at that moment in dialogue with Serbia and we have two months until March. Uh, Serbia has two months until March to show that it really wants to make a compromise and uh, allow us to move forward. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, this is really a bare bone minimum of requests. Uh, there are all, all sorts of other things which should have been put there in our, according to our opinion. For example, if you travel from Kosovo to Dublin, you cannot use a Serbian airspace because Serbia doesn't recognize Kosovo airspace. So Austrian Airlines, British Airways, Malev, all the big major airlines which are operating from airport to Pristina, and airport to Pristina is increasing 70% capacity for the last five years. So it's a growing airport. A lot of investments have been put in the last two years. Um, we have to take airspace of Romania, Bulgaria, and go around to arrive at North Europe. This is adding another 60 euros on every airfare. It's a really small practical issue which is of very big importance. If you're a Kosovar, you really couldn't travel to Serbia, nor could you use Serbian roads to go to um, Hungary, for example, and it's a central highway. Uh, it connects east and west, and simply because Serbia wouldn't accept our passports. Uh, and even the non-recognizers like Spain and Greece and even our Ch Table Tennis Federation is traveling to China, which is also a non-recognizer with our passports. Hence, um, non-acceptance of our passports really didn't help uh, making uh, reconciliation and communication easier between people. Uh, there are other things um, like energy sector. Um, uh, Serbia, Serbian public company has two years ago started billing uh, in north uh, electricity usage, uh, claiming that the uh, Kosovo electricity company is part of the Serbian electricity company, which is against all the treaties signed in the last five years on EU level and has been a, another request of EU towards Serbia. You cannot build in somebody else's country without <laughs> license or regulation or uh, paying taxes in that country. Uh, telecom, if I take my mobile and if I go to Serbia, I cannot make any phone call because Serbian telecom companies are banned by their own government to accept roaming agreements from our <coughs> telecom companies. Now, our telecom companies are not Kosovo. They're really now slowly getting you know, internationalized. Telecom Slovenia has bought one of the private ones, and the second public telecom is up for sale. Uh, this year possibly with Deutsche Telekom and some other companies interested to invest. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, if you go to Serbia, you can make a phone call as a Kosovo because they don't accept any roaming agreements. These are all very practical issues, but they show that in Serbia there's still reluctance to go all the way to the end. And I'm not speaking about the recognition of independence now, because that's a big, I, we understand it's a huge step to take for Serbia at this present moment, but nevertheless there are many smaller steps which can lead to normalization of situation, which are not currently being done. That being said, we are having now these three conditions and we hope that uh, solutions will, will be found. Uh, on the question of participation in regional fora, we are now stuck at the name of Kosovo. Serbia says we will not accept Republic of Kosovo, and because of five EU non-recognizers, we cannot insist on our constitutional name. We will insist on equal participation at the table, egalité for all. We will insist on us being equal in voting, and we will insist on us being having signatory powers in any kind of deals in regional basis. Uh, but we can compromise on the way, just like Macedonia had to comp compromise on the way, how you actually call on the paper the country uh, due to the five non-recognizers. We have suggested to be Kosovo with a small asterisk on the front page which says uh, without, without prejudice, without to, prejudice the to the status. Well, Serbia is insisting it has to say uh, under 1244 UNMIC resolution, uh, which for us is unacceptable. Not because we are against 1244. Mind you, International Court of Justice deemed that our independence declaration was not against 1244, was actually in line with 1244. 1244 opened a process. A UN envoy, my, my President Atisari, who later won Nobel for his efforts, was appointed. Uh, he worked based on the points of contact group and one of the main points of contact group was nobody can block the final agreement or settlement. 
Uh, and certainly once we started the negotiations, we didn't start negotiations with the, with the, main, with the idea of not finishing them. Those were finished, Atisari came with a proposal, um, and proposal was accepted by almost all, uh, basically, uh, in the international community, other than Russia, uh, who had its own reasons, and Serbia, uh, with its own reasons. Um, so 1244 is not acceptable for us because Serbia is using it in our name only to add ambiguity and lack of clarity to the process. And when they go to their public opinion, they say, oh, we have to keep the 1244 the name because that's the only thing that saves Kosovo from being independent. Well, Kosovo is independent. So you insisting on name which shows that Kosovo is not independent doesn't really add clarity. We need finality now in Kosovo. We, need, we, have, to, we have to close chapters and not leave chapters open in this book of relationship between Kosovo and Serbia. Hence, we have to make sure that uh, any kinds of solutions are reflective of present moment and the future relationship and not of the past. Uh, another reason why uh, 1244 is uh, not acceptable because it's not the only resolution dealing with Kosovo in the last 12 months. We had UN General Assembly which has adopted a resolution which said and noted the opinion of ICJ and also started the negotiations between Kosovo and Serbia based on purely technical level. So uh, General Assembly adopted the resolution uh, to the great dislike of, of Minister Jeremic who was fighting for another version which was uh, not accepting the ICJ opinion, uh, but uh, if you're mentioning the human resolutions, why not mention the ones also which are positive uh, uh, or uh, claim or more uh, forthcoming uh, when it comes to the independence of Kosovo. Um, so hopefully we'll find a solution of the name, and frankly, Kosovo is not Serbia, uh, again, Serbian membership in EU. I mean, closer any of us in Balkans is to EU, we support each other. Uh, if Serbia is in EU, that means because it has adopted fully Serb uh, European values, and that must be good for Kosovo. And if Kosovo is closer to EU, that also shows that uh, you know, chapters in Balkans are slowly closing, that we are moving forward and we are now thinking about other issues uh, than the ones from the past. Uh, so, uh, in principle, we wish that, all, and we want for all of us to be as close as Croatia uh, now. I mean, we are very jealous of, of our neighbors who, uh, who will enter the EU and I think it has been a moment of us feeling proud and very uh, positive and optimistic because closer the region gets closer, it's, uh, we get closer. But on the other hand, it has been a little bit sad because you see how everybody is moving forward and we are stuck a little bit in the, at the, not status quo, but we are stuck at the moment in which we cannot move as fast as we want <coughs> and we are not, we are dependent on others to move forward. It's very unfortunate position that we are dependent on Serbia to move in order for us to have a stable and, 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 and progressive uh, political agenda. Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Kosovo is very new. I mean, I think we have only three years uh, uh, in of our existence. Uh, we have a small diplomatic uh, corps, about 30 embassies and consulates. Uh, our Ambassador Hamiti has been just uh, appointed for, to Dublin as well, covering it from London. Um, and we had initially, in the first three years of our existence, a focus on uh, bilateral recognitions. Since we could not go through Security Council, we had to go one by one at each country from CARICOM to Asia, from Central America to uh, Africa to ask for uh, recognitions. Not all countries are equally responsive or equally quick and prompt in their uh, prioritization of Kosovo as top foreign policy priority. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, obviously it, it has taken some time for us to reach the number, but we are very happy. I think two nights ago, Ghana recognized Kosovo as independent and sovereign. We are now at the 86. And we are confident that we'll very soon reach the number of half of UN members, uh, over half recognizing Kosovo as independent. That is a good benchmark because that will allow for more pressure. And we already have signs from some critical countries that once we pass the half threshold and most of the planet recognizes Kosovo as independent, uh, there will be another wave of recognitions from, from, so from some specific countries. Um, but uh, this year uh, we have uh, changed a little bit and last year's strategic approach following the elections of last year. And we, have, um, and we are looking at how we can advance Kosovo's position on a multilateral level, uh, from Baku in Azerbaijan to Gibraltar, uh, from, and I would say Spain, UK, I guess, UK, and from Oslo to Istanbul. Only two million people are not covered by European Court of Human Rights, and those are Kosovars. Uh, Kosovars cannot sue their own state, i.e. us, if we breach the human rights, because we're not part of the Council of Europe and only members of Council of Europe can uh, enjoy the benefits of protection by European Court of Human Rights. Hence, we have to upgrade and update and see how we can increase the interaction of Kosovo on multilateral fora and forums. 
We are also not member of OSCE, another very important organization. Uh, Ireland is not cheering, and we have spoken yesterday at the ways how we can uh, upgrade and increase the interaction with OSCE. Uh, but in OSCE, you have a veto. Both Serbia and Russia have a veto, so we don't have any hope that we'll, in any time soon, uh, achieve full membership. Uh, but Kosovo is already a member of uh, World Bank and IMF, and I'll tell you one little detail. 106 countries have voted for Kosovo to become an independent, as an independent country, member of IMF. So we already have a positive landscape of about 130, 40 countries, which are having no problem with Kosovo being independent whatsoever. And we are also a member of uh, World Bank, and I think we are finishing the EBRD procedures uh, this spring, and we'll become a member of European Bank of Reconstruction and Development uh, uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, we are also looking at other possibilities in the multilateral organizations so we can reinforce and Kosovo can become part of this intricate web of interactions. You are a state if you have, uh, of course, control over territory, if you exercise, uh, if you have a, a parliament, and, but you also are a state in interactions with others. Uh, and uh, this is what we need now, to increase this interaction that we learn of our obligations, that our people are able to access some of the benefits, but also um, learn some of the um, instruments and mechanisms that are out there in the region uh, to help Kosovo advance its uh, open society, democracy, and economy. Um, um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also focused in public diplomacy as of last year. We started several successful projects. With European Council of Foreign Relations last year, we did a very good conference uh, uh, in conference uh, last year in October, November, when we invited experts from around the world uh, to participate and discuss the role of Turkey and Russia in Balkans vis-à-vis -vis European integration. You know, what are the dynamics with the <coughs> upcoming of Turkey and Russia as new players? Russia has is building a South Stream uh, pipeline and is increasingly uh, using uh, economic and political means uh, to have a role in, 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 in uh, Balkans and obviously Serbia being a platform for activities. On the other hand, Turkey is being as assertive as ever uh, with Turkish company being very uh, keen to invest in Balkans. They have a more tolerance for risky projects than the uh, average uh, mainstream European countries. So we had in Kosovo, we're now finishing uh, the highway uh, which was being constructed by Bechtel, the American uh, construction company and Turkish company. Uh, I think in record time they're finishing it uh, next year. It will connect uh, Adriatic coast via Kosovo to Serbia. It's one of the major infrastructure projects. Um, Kosovo budget, by the way, is spending 40% of its uh, total amount on infrastructure projects. Very important. Uh, we are expanding and trying to really connect also in the road uh, means uh, to the rest of the Balkans. Um, uh, Kosovo, I mean, when, since we have a Kosovo budget, we'll have also mentioned that Kosovo is the least indebted country in Europe. Our GDP to uh, our ratio to debt is only 2.5%, I think, uh, which is 20 times lower than what our constitution or laws allow. Uh, we have just uh, issued the first uh, f uh, bonds uh, and they were sold out uh, in a matter of a few minutes uh, to the, uh, the market. We are experimenting. Uh, US Treasury is helping us set up the electronic trading system for the bond market and this is, I think, functioning well. Our deposits, loans, and all the other banking data are in upswing. 15% uh, year-to-year -year basis 2010-2011. Uh, projected GDP growth for this year, 5.5%, which was decreased from 65 due to take into consideration the upcoming crisis that everybody talks about. Uh, but the uh, economy is definitely expanding, and it's the biggest expansion bar Turkey and Estonia in all of Europe. 6.5% uh, growth is not bad for last year in the middle of the crisis. We have used the extra uh, income and extra uh, resources raised. Uh, to do something which was very controversial last year, and it basically meant that we had to uh, change the IMF agreement that we uh, that we entered into the standby agreement because we increased the salaries of all public sectors for 30 to 50 percent. This was unheard of. You know, how can a government increase in times of austerity in Europe salaries of their employees for 30 percent, for 50 percent for the teachers? But I think and the we use the euro, by the way. And we use the euro. Yes, I mean we are euro. We use the, We are. We and Montenegro are. Queer countries. We have a uh, euro which we inherited because we used Deutschmark in 1999-2000. So we are two eurozone members, uh, which didn't have to fulfill the uh, conditions that others are expected to. But probably because that's we are very small economies, so we don't really uh, play a big role in the euro market. Um, uh, but economy is in upswing. If you, uh, I would uh, ask you to read the December report of IMF on Kosovo. It gives uh, full-fledged data on, on on where are we now. We are optimists, and all this was achieved without selling our family jewels. 
we have not sold our public, publicly owned tenant telecom yet. If you look at all over Balkans, the only public telecom not sold yet is ours, uh, Kosovo. Uh, we have not sold our mining rights and concessions. Kosovo is the third largest lignite basin in all of European continent. We have lignite for next 200 years uh, if, it, if we go to up to 2,000 megawatt capacity. It's huge reserves. Uh, lignite has been a growth element also in past for Kosovo in the 70s and 80s. And we hope that, um, that we can, uh, I think this year we should be finishing a tender in which quite a few international energy companies have been interested to build a new power plant which would substitute the old 60s East German power plant. I know that carbon is not very popular in Europe, but we have to do this to enable speedy uh, change of technology from old Eastern Ger German technology, which is creating pollution about 70 times higher than European average to a more modern technology, uh, which will decrease the overall pollution um, even though it will use coal as a basis. We also have uh, not sold um, any of the other, we have not basically been yet a focus of direct foreign investments in other fields. I think on you know, 6th of February we'll have a big conference with investors in ski tourism. Kosovo is a mountainous area and I tell you, uh, Brezovica Resort, I, I'm, I'm an amateur skier, but those who, uh, those who do ski, they say that it's one of the most beautiful and most difficult landscape uh, and most challenging in, uh, for, for, for skiing all around Europe. Uh, there have been Italian, Austrian uh, ski operators which are interested to uh, invest. As I said, the airport has already been uh, given to concession to uh, Airport de Lyon and a uh, Turkish company which, is, which have received the concession for 40 years and they are now um, increasing the capacity by 20 times of the terminals and the, and the, and the usage. Pristina Airport is already more frequented than all Balkan ones bar Belgrade, I think, and this is because one third of our population lives abroad. Just like Irish, Armenians, Greeks, in times of crisis, a lot of Kosovo left Kosovo. One third of the population, according to census of last year, live across Europe. And this is also one more reason why we are dependent on Europe. Um, there are a lot of, not a lot, but there are some political parties in Kosovo which think that the path of Kosovo should be thinking on unification with Albania and not focusing on Europe and um, uh, fixing the old injustice of pasts and you know London conference after the Balkan wars and all sorts of historic elements. Uh, but we think that this is not the agenda of today. The agenda of Kosovo should be focused directly to EU because this is where the national concerns lie and this is where the national interests lie and this is where our cousins are. This is where my aunt lives, uh, our, our friends, are, are, you know, basically Kosovars are dependent on communicating freely with, uh, with, with Europe because we have so much of our diaspora outside. I think um, uh, Albanian language is more spoken than Italian in Switzerland now, and this is not a joke, this is actually a number. Uh, there are so many Kosovars in Switzerland. Um, so we are now at a very interesting moment. We have one path which is very clear and very optimistic. If we do these deals with Serbia, if elections in Serbia bring a landscape which want to finish the old conflicts, then we have a chance for the first time in history of Balkans, for all Balkan countries to be on friendly terms with each other, to have democratic governments, and to be focusing more on economy than past conflict. This is possible. I don't know if it's going to be Mr. Tadic and in his election or somebody else, but you can see the path. It's there. Uh, window uh, is, is, is open. Will we use this window of opportunity? Unfortunately, it's not in our hands. Kosovo will be engaged in dialogue will work in dialogue and will never leave dialogue as a means of sol solving problems. On the other hand, we have the second back door, which is more problematic, and I can, it's also visible, that we regress. If, if we try to keep status quo, if we don't move and if we don't shift the gears in both countries, uh, this status quo will bring more aggravation. If Tadic cannot deliver to his own uh, voters, if we cannot deliver to our own voters promises of more European integration, uh, then uh, other forces can come to power, forces which uh, have in past uh, not shown to be uh, very friendly to good neighborly policies. Uh, in Kosovo, uh, those forces will be those that are not as keen on, on, on Europe as, as, as the uh, uh, political landscape or mainstream is. Uh, so that path is more darker and, and, and is there. I, I hope we don't enter that, but uh, we can't lose more time. I was only 12 when Milosevic came to power. In 1991, um, Serbian police came to schools and closed all of the schools in Albanian language. 
and we went to head schooling. You know it from Irish uh, history, but we went to underground schools. Uh, ambassador was a professor, and basically went to uh, to basements, to private houses, to learn in our own language throughout the 90s. We lost 10 years there. Anmik and Yuan came. Yuan was protectorate, and you know, protectorates are good to keep the peace, but they're not good for long-term development. Uh, Bangladeshi and Irish and Albanian and, uh, and uh, an American, if they get together, they can make sure that we build a atmosphere of tolerance, but they will not work on a long-term three, five-year education reforms or reforms of taxes or reforms of economy because that's not the nature of protectorates. Uh, so we lost another 10 years in development there. Hence, we lost 20, decade, 20 years, two decades, not to our own fault. Uh, now we cannot use another decade uh, uh, waiting for Serbia to change its heart and to realize that what happened uh, in 1999 was so horrible, so unacceptable, it has changed so much the dynamics of Balkans that we cannot go back to, to the past. I mean, and especially since there is no real, I mean, I'm not a religious person, but repentance is an important word here. There is no real drive in Serbia to look at the uh, situation in Kosovo in terms of uh, misdeeds done to the population and uh, asking for forgiveness, really. Uh, we are very happy that Mr. Tadic has apologized to the victims of Srebrenica for the 7,000 boys slaughtered. Uh, by the Serbian forces in which, according to the Hague Tribunal and ICJ, a uh, Serbian uh, army uh, in Yugoslavia played a direct role, but they never apologized to Kosovo. And I mind you, if you look at the uh, Hague Tribunal proceeding against Milo Milutinovic case, uh, when basically uh, seven top generals and top leaders of Serbia were uh, convicted of crimes in Kosovo, uh, the sentence there was that the entire state was systematically engaged in eliminating Kosovars. One million people were on the run. Uh, you know that better than that made Ireland add and agree to the NATO intervention. Uh, these were, we cannot forget these things. Uh, that was a Holocaust Remembrance Day yesterday. And um, it's good that we think of victims because they deserve uh, uh, to, to do so. But we can never forget the perpetrators who have done the crimes. We can never, we, we should not lose a sight of how did this things start in our drive to find peace and reconciliation because peace and reconciliation without justice and transitional justice uh, will not be final and will not be uh, conducive to peace and, and, and friendly relations. Um, what else um, is in Kosovo? I think uh, it's a cute little country. Uh, we have problems uh, in uh, justice and uh, organized crime, but these are not problems, mind you. Do not believe when people say that Kosovo is a dark hole of Europe in which Islamic radicals are trying to take over the Christian province and where you know, people are harvesting organs and selling them left and right on the world market. And these, are not, these are propaganda cues uh, intentionally given by, by, by the other side or elements of the, of, of the other side trying to paint the picture of Kosovo not as a successful story but as a failed state. If Kosovo is failed, that will mean that the entire drive to support independence was wrong. Uh, but we cannot enter those waters. If you look at the data, if you look at the statistics, of course, uh, Pristina is the least uh, the capital with least street crime in all of Europe. You are safer in Pristina than in some streets of Dublin. That I can guarantee you. Uh, uh, you are safer in Pristina than in all other European capitals. Our crime rates are lower. Uh, corruption is a horrible and serious challenge to all the Balkans. We've had a, a, a prime minister killed after Second World War uh, by organized crime and, and war criminals, and that was in Serbia. Uh, um, we had uh, in Bosnia challenges uh, with, with uh, corruption uh, engulfing and slowing down the progress. And in Kosovo also, uh, we have to make an environment in which those that steal money from the public go to jail. I entered politics uh, uh, hoping that, um, knowing that there is muck and mud, uh, but uh, we will have to clean that muck and mud. Uh, and I, and I, I'm optimist that slowly uh, we are building a system in which uh, uh, there will be equality for all and there will be a chance for pursuit of happiness uh, and opportunities for every single Kosovar. Uh, certainly there's more chance for pursuit of happiness now than ever before in our history, uh, which has been driven by, by conflict more than we cared for. Um, Dennis McShane, former Europe Minister, wrote a book recently, like lost in November, Why Kosovo Still Matters. UK. U UK is Europe Minister, yeah. Uh, why Kosovo Still Matters. Uh, why Kosovo Still Matters in Europe is because Europe is now in a, in a, in a, in a, 
introspective phase. Uh, and it has to really finish this introspection sooner rather than later from what I read from Davos to the rest of the capitals because uh, Euro crisis and crisis of confidence of the markets and, cri and, and other political challenges have really put a very difficult uh, situation. And I think that the consensus overwhelming uh, has been uh, that we need more integration. We need more financial integration. We need for Europe uh, to really have a more tight bonds as it, we move forward in this century in order to basically uh, uh, save and protect the weaker members of, e of, of Europe. But if we are insisting on more integration on financial sectors, then this has to be projected with more integration on foreign policy. Now, Kosovo is not recognized by five EU members. Uh, how can EU uh, hope to have a unified foreign policy and uh, an effective external uh, action service uh, if uh, they cannot agree on Kosovo, which is in the middle of Europe? How will we agree on China, on Palestine, on uh, Africa, on ma major global problems if we cannot agree on a population of 1.8 million people which is sitting inside in the middle of European continent. I think it's a big challenge for Europe and it's a big test of European foreign policy. Uh, we've had, we are optimists that the uh, five non-recognizers uh, are slowly changing simply because reality is dawning. Uh, we have done a, quite a few strategic papers and researches on why they have not recognized us. We've spoken uh, to some of these capitals. We've had a good visits uh, recently uh, fr from there here and from Kosovo um, to those capitals. Um, and we hope that the, some of the political changes in the landscape in these countries will be conducive to a greater acceptance of Kosovo as an independent country. Each one of the countries has their own reasons, obviously. Cyprus has its own historic conflict with Turkey and by far is on the range of non-recognition the further, furthest afield. Cyprus doesn't want to contact or communicate with us as much. I mean, they give declarations that are for peace in Balkans, but uh, so far we've had uh, difficulties in, in, in approaching and increasing the interaction. On the other hand, we have uh, all the other fours which are in greater or slower degree, increasing the interaction, uh, organizing visits, and hopefully uh, sooner rather than later we'll come to the conclusion that Kosovo, if some of these countries fear from their own internal problems, their own internal minorities, that Kosovo is not an example, nor a model, nor the reason to be feared uh, uh, for any kind of internal discussions. Kosovo was never an internal problem of Serbia. The moment when uh, uh, aggregarious uh, uh, violations of human rights, which went up to basically chasing half the population outside the country and ethnically cleaning the country, um, uh, the moment when uh, that passed, I think, uh, uh, to the Security Council, Kosovo became a global problem, became a problem of United States. Nations uh, and an and entire uh, uh, global landscape, and I don't think that there is any danger ever that uh, a Slovak minority uh, or Hungarian minority Slovakia will be attacked by their own state or their Catalans or Basques will in any shape or form be the victims uh, of, of their own state. I think we are talking about the EU members and democracies, uh, so uh, there is no parallel whatsoever. And mind you, when we declared independence, uh, there was one point in which all of EU countries agreed, and there was a declaration signed the eve of the uh, Declaration of Independence by the European Commission, which said that Kosovo is a sui generis case uh, and uh, is not really a model which has uh, parallels to others uh, in, in, in history or, or, or region. We've had a UN protectorate, there were resolutions, uh, there was a path which was very uh, specific and not really uh, comparable or com comparative to other problems in the world. Um, what else is to be said? I think this is basically my, uh, my, my short presentation, but I'll be very happy to take uh, Q&As on any wide range of fields. I used to work a little bit on energy sector and telecom as well as a consultant, private consultant PR field, so economic questions are also not out of bounds, uh, but I will be more than happy to also talk about the present moment in dialogue and, uh, and, the, and the challenges that we are facing as a government. Thank you very much. Thank you.